Welcome everybody to the first of what will be many segments featuring Tim and myself here. Uh, Tim and I are going to take a journey, like many nerds have, um, through every MCU film, discussing them and sharing our thoughts, but we're also going to rank them in the end. Um, Tim, what kind of point system would you like to give this? What should we call this? Oh, I think I think just um, no flurkins this time. <laughs> no um, flurkins. I don't think we need a, a tangible object per se. Um, maybe maybe we can come up with a cool one by the next episode. But yeah, I think just a just a typical like whole number and half rating. So we'll have a, like a, a rating, rating out of ten. 10. And we will yeah. kind of see who rises to the top and then maybe debate at the end. I think that sounds good. Just kind of see who, yeah. has, the, who has the merit in the end when it comes to these Marvel movies. Yeah. And we're going three movies at a time because it is quite a quite a bit to watch each week. Um, but on top of that, I mean, they're quite lengthy discussions and we want to give each film the time that they need. So we started in order of release, not necessarily order of uh, chronological order of watching. Um, so naturally, we started with Iron Man and now Tim. Yes, sir. I'm curious. Thoughts on Iron Man? The thing that oh, I, th- I think it was. Uh, I think it was rather fine. Um, it's it was a really really great way to kick off the um, the MCU. Um, and I have to say, think think about it after I, I saw the movie. You have to kind of. Um, yeah, you kind of have to hand its success in part to um, the shitty like Sony films before, like uh, Daredevil, Fantastic Four, and because um, you had never seen characters like this before, and um, it, it, I think they sacrificed themselves as shitty movies um, to like kind of pave way for Iron Man to, you know, make his move into the mainstream. Um, so I, I really admired admire respect that yeah one of the two um but i think john favreau um i think that i think this was his directorial debut if i'm not mistaken if not it was one of them i know that there is yeah there's a bursting of john favreau on the scene um, yeah it, around it was time. yeah it was really really awesome um so like i said i have notes and i guess i'll just um go down them uh, the, the biggest point is I am so glad they replaced Terrence Howard. Um, we'll talk about this more when we get to Iron Man 2, but um, it took me a while to adjust to, John, to uh, Don Cheadle, but I cannot picture Terrence Howard playing War Machine if he had continued to do it. I'm with you there. Um, and what, watching the fight scenes... Um, well, first of all, I, I thought people complain now that um, that the MCU is too tropey and the fact that, uh, you know, it's just hero versus evil version of hero, mm-hmm. like, like they had with uh, just WandaVision recently. Um, but I, this was the first and probably the, the best example of this. Um, not even in a negative way. Um, I thought Stain was a very, very good foil for Tony. Um, in the, in the, uh, just in the fact that um, you know it was Stain, um, essentially um, just stuck on the path of you know war profiteering and warmongering and. Um, or should I say ironmongering? Um, and yeah, it, it was it was a per, he was a perfect example of um, why Tony wanted to get away from from all that. Also, how good of an Obadiah did Jeff Bridges look like? He just oh my looked, God, he yeah. looked the part. <laughs> yeah. Oh, he looks he looks slick with uh, that beard and bald head. Yes, I am super envious. Yeah, um, I've got both, but I don't pull it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we need that long, um, <laughs> chiseled. Yes. Um, and one one thing that I noticed the the fight scenes were 
were really freaking cool. Um, and I noticed that, uh, speaking of tropes, um, there's a tendency in a lot of movies to be blatant about the, the whole mechanic of, you know, something like comedic happens early in the movie and then it comes back later to benefit them in the climax. Um, this, I, I don't, I didn't see that. And it, it feels phenomenal, honestly, because yeah, um, you got the, you know, you got the flares that he set off when he's being bear hugged by Stain. Um, same thing they used uh, during the fighter jet scene. Um, and then, uh, and then the icing problem uh, when he, when he was up in the, like the stratosphere. And, but that didn't, it helped, it helped him in the fight, but it wasn't, you know, pivotal in the climax. Um, and I just really, really like that. Like, it's cool that you, it's cool that you bring him back, but not, not for like that one pivotal moment where it turns around for the better for the hero. You're awfully quiet over there. No, I'm taking it all in. Oh, okay. All right. Um, let's see. List. The, the thing I appreciate about having these conversations with you is that you watch films through a different lens than I do. And so I try to take in all of your observations because I appreciate them. Yeah, I, I appreciate that too. And um, just from the uh, our podcast, No Coast Defenders, now available on Podbean and Spotify, um, <laughs> you're you're so much better than me at at um, talking about the social commentary of stuff. And I just didn't know what to say during all that. But um, I I thought the beginning of the movie itself was uh, pretty slow. Um, it wasn't until he got back into the States and he started building that first prototype, um, you know, where he was testing the, um, the, the boosters at the 10% and 1% that it really started to pick up and, um, you know, the pacing got back on track, but the whole, um, but the whole movie was very fluid. Um, like everything from like his his witty dialogue, um, I, I really enjoyed that part. Um, but as slow as it was, oh, go ahead. I think the dialogue too, because I was reading, you know, when this movie came out, obviously everybody was like reading everything they could find about it. Um, yeah. But I was a lot of that was ad libbed um, by Robert oh, Downey really? Jr. Yeah, so it's. Like a lot of the quick whips and the comebacks, the reason why yeah. the character works so well is because it's, I plan to talk about this later, but it was just Robert Downey Jr. being Robert Downey Jr. on his That's salvation tour, which makes it even better. Yeah. As slow as the beginning of the movie was, I really enjoyed every scene that he had with uh, Yinsen. Mm -hmm. um, he was a really, really cool um, character and um, a nice parallel to um, uh, Stanley Tucci who will show up with uh, Captain America later on. Um, well, it was a very tender uh, interaction between them, you know, and you it was, this, yeah. You have this just self-absorbed individual forming this tender bond with somebody of a completely different walk of life and a man who's willing to sacrifice himself for Tony and after knowing him for just a brief amount of time. Like, I mean, it's, but it didn't feel forced. Like it felt natural. Like they'd connected in such a way where he's like, I got you, man. Yeah. Yeah. Just, um, you just knew that that transformation to that new mindset was, was complete when, um, Yinsen's last dying words were, you know, don't waste your life. Yeah. Um, which was, Oh, I get chills just thinking about it. There's a lot of stuff in here that gave me chills and that's the first one. Um, uh, Oh, and watching this, there's a pretty famous YouTube uh, video out there now that, that talks about how um, um, Marvel music isn't memorable. And they use this movie as like the prime example. I really could not give two shits about it being memorable. Um, that's just one of many aspects a movie can use to be memorable. Um, like all of Star Wars, although 
and Star Wars got a lot of it correct. Um, but I think in this case, it it just fits the the tone of the scene so well. That's all that really matters is if it fits the movie at the present time, it, it doesn't matter. Well, I mean, are we watching music films or are we watching comic book films? I mean, exactly. at what point is music all that relevant in the comic books? So, yeah. Plus, I but, mean, they need yeah. to listen to Guardians on repeat for hours on end. And oh, tell me about it. it. Um, I think the the last. Oh, um, I don't know if you knew this or anyone at home. Um, one of the guys in the control room during that fighter jet scene um, actually ended up going to DC and played uh, Coleman Ross um, in The Dark Knight. He's the guy that was trying to blackmail Bruce Wayne. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I did not was, know that. Yeah. Yeah. Just a, just a quick little uh, tidbit. Well, but, that's pretty cool. Um, yeah, the last the last point I really have about the movie is, um, you know, everyone loved when he first spoke in the suit. It had that like really like smooth, deep voice. Um, I feel like he got down. I feel like they got downgraded a bit uh, in the later films. It just sounded like he was like on speakerphone. Yeah. Um, and I wish they would have kept that. Although even in this movie, it was all inconsistent. Um, but it was awesome nonetheless. And that's really about it for me on Iron Man. Um, so what would your ranking be? Um, it, it's a really good watch. Uh, it's not going to be as high as you'd expect. Um, I give it a solid 7.5 out of 10. 7.5, all right. So yeah. that's kind of the marker for now. Um, Iron Man's at a 7.5, and we'll kind of see where everything else falls. Yeah. Um, Full disclosure, I was not looking forward to rewatching it. I, um, a, I, I think I've seen it maybe 10 times since the theaters, and I think I saw it 10 times in the theater. So it's just one of those that I've, I've seen quite a bit. Um, I can't believe it came out in 2008, by the way. I know. <laughs> it's just what a journey. 13 years ago? Jesus. Yes. I will say I love the development of Tony in this film, but I also enjoy that, yeah, he's Iron Man now, but the journey's not complete. You know, that kind of... He's going to constantly have yeah. himself and you see it not just with the heart, but with the personality and that I'm Iron Man part, you know, that that swagger is still there. So he's still not mm -hmm. quite humble um, yeah. as we see him eventually become, um, you know, through it all, he does become a kind of humble dude in his own right. Mm -hmm. uh, That's especially just by Iron Man 3, he's, he's incredibly yeah. humble. And by getting, by knowing what we know now and by seeing Don Cheadle, um, I'm so glad Terrence Howard was uh, there's something that just feels unnatural in that film. And it's because there's zero mm -hmm. chemistry between him and anybody on that set. Yeah. He's very, he's very uh, stale, um, yeah. almost uh, monotone. Yeah. You know, I've, yeah. I've liked him in some things. I just, man, what an upgrade Don Cheadle was in every way. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. He, he um, brings the sass that the character definitely needed. I think having a not super powered villain to start the whole thing off was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, looking yep. back on it now, because it does get a little stale having this every every day the sky is falling, as opposed to just who knew the guy you're working with could be the asshole you got to mess with. Right. Um, yeah. and, and so I actually appreciate that about this film. Um, I like the music in it. I think it's yeah. perfect. It fits the era where Iron Man comics were hot too. Like the the singles that they use in that from, you know, ACDC, Black Sabbath. Yeah. Stuff. But they don't lean too much on them, which is nice. No, they don't. They, but that's that's when those songs were hot, is or when these yeah. books were hot. So it and these stories. I mean, it's it shows just that level of thinking, like how deep into detail they get on this stuff. Yeah, but I greatly appreciate that. I'm not a big Gwyneth Paltrow fan, but she's a great pepper, and she, their she chemistry really is. is also undeniable. As a story, I I like it better now. You know, looking back on everything, I, I, I actually appreciated this film much more than I did after I got other Marvel films. You know, like after other ones came out, I was like, ah, screw that movie. Because, yeah. well, actually, I don't really enjoy the first, like, seven anymore. Mm -hmm. um, but 
you know, each one that came out after those few, you know, I, I was kind of like, oh, Iron Man, screw that movie. But rewatching it now, I think it might be one of my favorites, actually, yeah. um, simply because of just how pared down it was compared to what we have. You know, I didn't like a lot of the big ones. You know, I really did not like the Avengers. Yeah. Um, uh, the Infinity Wars weren't really for me um, at the end of the day. Um, the character development drove this movie. It really mm-hmm. did. And yeah. Um, I know that as they got more big budget and more widespread releases, they got away from the character stuff and more to this kind of story stuff and, you know, what's, what's going to lead to the next film as opposed to let's, let's really spend some time here and develop this. So yeah. I appreciate that about it. And to be honest though, my favorite scene of it is the end credit scene with Nick Fury. Um, oh yeah. Just because it's, even now I get chills. I'm like, oh shit, what's coming. <laughs> and so, um, just that, that wow factor is still there. Meaning just, it was that impactful at the time. So I don't want to repeat too much what you said, actually. Um, I appreciate the same things. I really enjoy just the, just the development of all of it. Um, I think I'd have to, based on where I know I rank other films moving forward, I think I'd probably have to give it a seven. Yeah. Um, not bad, not the best, but um, it was actually a really good rewatch. I'm glad I did. Yeah. Glad, um, I was not looking forward to it by any means. So it was a it was a pleasant surprise to be like, oh wow, I really do still enjoy this film. It holds up better than I thought. Yeah, I would have ranked it higher if it wasn't for you know just that slow beginning. Um, but goddamn, do I like respect the hell of you know where it, you know where it led to, and just the just the um, you know just the meaning behind that release. And the era that it kicked off. And boy, did it kick shit off uh, in ways that we never thought. Like even, you know, the Avengers Initiative. All right, cool. Gotcha. Yeah. Being a comic book guy, I know what I knew what it was. I just didn't realize it would trail off into so many ventures and lead to everything that's in store. You know, I mean, just wow. It's amazing. But it's also yeah. kind of how it was done in the comics. And so it's just that attention to detail from the MCU is just incredible from the start. And that moves us into a movie that I think we're going to have very conflicting opinions on, but I love your passion for some of it. Yeah. And that is The Incredible Hulk. (laughs) Yeah. What did you think about it? Why don't you go first? I will say the fight between Hulk and the Abomination, one of the better fight scenes we've had. Um, That being said... uh, I, I don't I don't know. The casting wasn't it for me. Um it was funny. We just did the was it date Mary Chill? Is that what yeah. we did? Yeah. Um, for these actors. And I just I don't know, man. It's it was a weird one for me because I had such high expectations for it. And it just let me down so much. Edward Norton, I love him as an actor. And I just thought he was a shitty Hulk. Um, He acted it too much. I don't want my Hulk to be acted. (laughs) I just want my Hulk. You know, unless he's Professor Hulk, you know, something like that. Yeah, right. Um, It's like Edward Norton was too good of an actor for the film. And it showed. And yeah, I really just, other than, you know, Ross, I wasn't a big fan of much of it. Mm. Um. I thought the CGI got sloppy at certain times. The story was very convoluted. Um, I did not enjoy the writing in that at all. It was better than Eric Bana's Hulk. Um, oh yeah. Well, that's not setting <laughs> that's not setting the bar too high. Yeah, if that means anything. Yeah. I just there was no feeling in it for me. It's one of those where it's I saw it in the theater and I was just very underwhelmed, and I felt like a buzzkill because everybody I saw it with were like, "Oh, it was amazing." I'm like, "All right, cool." Best part of it was the end credit. So. We'll yeah. move on from there. But um, yeah, it just, I'm also, um, there's only certain few Hulk issues I'm a fan of too. So like when it comes to the comics, he's not like one of those I was dying to see. Um, I do like Mark Ruffalo's Hulk better simply because he's goofier and the personality shows through and it's more fitting for the Hulk, I think. Um, and I sound just like this privileged asshole for all the stuff we've seen because I'm like, oh, wow, he overacted the Hulk, you know, but it's, (laughs) Edward Norton was too good for the role, I think, and it showed. Um, Yeah, I don't know. I just, it's, 
I was hope I watched it with a more open mind because I'm like I know so many people who love this movie and you know I'm like I got this from my Costco because he loves the Hulk so much but mm-hmm. I just uh, it gets a five for me honestly as a movie it's oh, just yeah. it's just not a good movie to me um, and I, mean, I don't want to spend too much time trashing it that's not what this is about but um, in the end it gets no a it's five. your it's your opinion you can I think you can trash it all you like really but I don't be too negative about it it's, it gets a five for me okay well. I'm going to um, counteract your your wet blanketness. Um, this is <laughs> one of my up. this is one of my like original um, favorite movies from the MCU. Um, let me just start by saying I loved, 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 loved um, Tim Roth as the Abomination, and also the. The, the direction they chose to go for uh, his look. Um, he's not that, you know, am, amphibious looking um, creature yeah. anymore. Um, I like the fact that they moved more towards like the bony look with the <clears throat> protrusions. But um, yeah, the CGI still wasn't great. <laughs> um, and I'm not going to try and convince myself otherwise. Um <laughs> But for me, CGI doesn't really matter. As long as it looks like what it's supposed to be. Um, I mean, it could be like CGI from like Spy Kids and I still won't have an issue from it. Um, <laughs> but um, I really I really enjoyed the main credits, first of all, because um, when Bruce was sitting in that chair and, um, you know, the crosshair is moving towards his forehead and he just gives that one little wink to uh betty i thought that was just so clever to kind of give you like um a quick subtle introduction to uh their um relationship essentially um and i also liked how it showed well it 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 set up those two and also set up ross like um just right in the main credits they were they were able to um show that he's been like mercilessly tracking him down for months um so i thought like the the, the stuff that they chose to uh show in the main credits was just perfect um and the perfect amount of um setup that they needed for the movie uh edward norton as bruce yeah it, he is my favorite bruce banner um i do not like mark ruffalo um, I feel like he's he's too goofy, um, and um, but he is he is stiff. I will admit he is stiff, and um, like none of his humor really lands. Um, but I can take that with a grain of salt. There's there's other stuff around between um, Tim Blake Nelson as uh, Samuel Stearns, and then um, even. Even Betty got um, a scene when they came to New York in a taxi um, where there was a little bit of humor. But goddamn, I want them to bring her back. Um, she she was great. I loved, Liv Tyler was one of my favorite parts of this movie. Um, you know, before I was said, you know, I can take her or leave her. But she's right, she's right up there with um, uh, Thunderbolt Ross. Um, and just great, great characters. And I thought um, he was—I thought he was great casting for that role. Oh yeah, yeah. That's why I'm the stand. Um, but uh, yeah. Um, going back to my my chills list. Um, that scene where uh, Betty's with her new her new beau in um, I think it was Tony's. Italian restaurant where Bruce was staying um, when you know they locked eyes as he was coming out of the back room that gave me chills Um, and then yeah just just the way they shot that um, was just really really great and a lot people don't seem to catch all of the nods to the old Hulk um as they as they probably should have um because there was that one scene where uh 
he was bringing the pizza to the college to try and meet up with um, Betty, and he ran into Lou Ferrigno as a security guard, and he bribed him with pizza. I don't know if you recall that. I do. Yeah, but also, um, when you see him back, change back as a human, um, after he became the Hulk in the bottling plant in Brazil, um, they actually play the slow music as he's walking up the street before he, um, before the scene with the market and he buys like the stretchy pants. It mm-hmm. was like, it was just like Easter egg after Easter egg after Easter egg. I, I'm, I'm all about it. Um, like an ode. Yeah. Yeah. A nice homage, if you will. Uh, there were some cheesy parts like, like how, uh, how Ross was like scrambling the Humvees during the the scene in the college square. Um, You know, it, you know, you got the Humvees like bouncing off, you know, all the hills and stuff. And that, that, that aspect was just like action for the sake of action. Yeah. Um, But that was so cool. I wish with, um, I wish with, uh, Mark Ruffalo's Hulk. They would have have him. They would have had him use more items. The way um, the way this Hulk like took the scrap metal off the tank that he scrapped and was chopping at the ground at Tim Roth while uh, he was fighting with the uh, serum. Oh, oh, that, that's what that's what the Hulk needs to be. I I feel. And then like later on in the climax when he. Um, tore the car apart and used the two halves as boxing gloves. Oh, that was so great. Um, let's see what else. And it, as much as I love Tim Roth and um, William Hurt in this movie, one of the things where it kind of gets held back is um, Leterrier, who's the director. Uh, Louis Louis Leterrier. Um, He probably unintentionally very obviously blocked out the movies in into the different acts because after after one fight scene it cut back to Tim Roth going to Ross and being like I want more and that happened again and again and um, those are just I, I really want to like those scenes, but those those just do nothing for me but show me that okay, one act has ended, the new one is you know starting, and it's it's very unfortunate. It's it's a little clunky in that in that aspect. Um, I wish it was a little bit more fluid. But Tim Roth, man, he was so dope. Um, I really hope they bring him back for. Uh, she Hulk, and uh, yeah, the the fight scene was great. Um, that was one of my top fight scenes, I think. In, in yeah, in the MCU, to be honest. Yeah, so I'll I'll always love this movie. Um, I know people have their issues with it, and people um, might say that you know it's not really part of the MCU, but um, yeah, in my heart. It always will be. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm going to give it a straight up 8 out of 10. Um, wow. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Really great. 8 out of 10. But um, it could be better. That really... Oh, oh, one more. I'm sorry. One more One more point. They, sh- <laughs> In addition to Liv Tyler, they should have brought back Tim Blake Nelson so he could be the leader. He was <laughs> set up so cheesily. Cheesily? The way he was set up was so cheesy and it was so great. Um, and I, he's such an incredibly underrated actor um, between his work and um, Watchmen. Um, I haven't seen him in the new Watchmen, but I hear he's pretty decent in that. Um, and then Holes, in this movie, it's, he's just so great. Uh, Old Brother, Where Art Thou? Uh, he's in that too. So yeah, really, really great movie for me. I uh, 
<laughs> love your enthusiasm and your passion about it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why I knew it's, I always like hearing you talk about it because I know how much I dislike it. So hearing the joy come from you makes me smile. Oh, thank you. But I'm, I'm a, even, even going off the notes, I'm just a jumbled mess. That's <laughs> nah, beautiful. Just rambling. It's beautiful. I, um, I am interested to hear your thoughts on Iron Man 2 because I kind of changed my perspective on it uh, yeah. watching it again. So um, we're at 8 out of 10 on Hulk. All right. So that's high praise to start. So I'm curious to see where this goes in the next yeah. 20 plus films. So are you, are you uh, recording these scores? I am. Oh, cool. I'm going to make a spreadsheet for us. Nice. Um, what's that? Nice. Yeah, I'm going to get that going. I'm going to get all fancy on it. Um, curious, Iron Man 2, what do you got for me, my friend? Um, this movie has one of my favorite scenes, even now, um, in all of the MCU. Um, I actually make that too. Uh, there's two parts in this movie that, that give me the best chills. Um, and that scene or in those scenes I will talk about later, but um, it's a, it had a really great intro. Um, and I'm sick of, I'm sick and tired and to this day, having people compare, um, you know, having people draw these fake parallels between whatever's going on in front of them and um, to uh, Tony in the cave. But I, I feel like this is the one true parallel um, that needs to be noticed. Um, and I, I just don't think that the intro to this movie showing um, Anton Vanko passing away and um, Ivan, uh, you know, enacting his revenge by building his own art reactor. It was so, so well done. Oh my God, it was such a cool scene. Um, and also like, talk about redemption stories, but we got Robert yeah. Downey Jr. with the redemption story and then we get Mickey Rourke. Like, yeah. Come on. Yeah, I felt I felt like Whiplash should have um, in the end been fleshed out way, way more. Um, Cause let's be honest, in both fight scenes he was in, he got um, he got taken out within two minutes. Um, maybe even a minute. Yeah. Each, each time. And it was just very, very unfortunate. Um, but, that was a bit of a waste. Yeah. Oh, when they but when they had that um, that operatic chorus going, when he was dripping the the fluid on the on the tubes, and you saw you saw it traveling through the tube, and then it lit up, and then oh, you just heard the you know that final hammer where it showed Iron Man two. Mm-hmm. God, that is like a special. Yeah, that is like quintessential MCU MCU for me, um, and. Uh, just like how I said that Stain was a great parallel um, for Tony, Justin Hammer is um, not only one of my favorite uh, characters in, in all of the MCU, and I hope I hope um, he ends up coming back. But um, he's a dick. He's <laughs> he's so good at being a dick, Sam Rockwell. Yeah, he's he really is. So good at being a dick. <laughs> um, Sam Rockwell is just amazing. Um, if you haven't, if you haven't seen, um, Jojo Rabbit. Oh, oh I love played, it. Take a, that's yeah. another take a movie. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, he was great. It's Justin Hammer. Like I, I will watch this entire movie just to see his little jig, um, on stage at, at the Stark Expo. And, uh, between that and the scene with where he's going through all the weapons and he brings out the, um, the ex-wife. <laughs> oh, it's just so great. Um, I think there's a lot of subtleties that were lost on the audience in this film. Yeah, yeah. His his uh, chemistry was great with um, Tony Stark, but also with um, Mickey Rourke yeah. as well. Yeah, that's really great. Just seeing him get intermittently more and more frustrated with um, you know the language barrier, all his demands and stuff like that. Um, the bird <laughs> yeah um yeah cheetah was great um i don't have 
as much to say about this movie because it's just so good. Um, but those two scenes that I was talking about, um, oh god, yeah. There's there little sidebar. There's a YouTube series where um, different YouTubers were um, picking their their one marvelous scene was the name of the um, was the name of the uh, the project, and they picked out their one uh, the one scene that they thought was the best in all of the MCU. I think I think it was up until. Um, right before uh, Infinity War, so like uh, Ragnarok around the time. Mm-hmm. If I had to pick one, my one Marvelous scene, it would it would be the uh, the scene where Tony was uh, reviewing all the old footage of his dad. And besides, um, you know, seeing all the outtakes and stuff, the one line that gets me every goddamn time is when he says, my greatest creation is you. Mm-hmm. Oh, oh, they do they just do such a good job of setting that up. And then um it's it's just such a great scene. And there, there I go again with the chills. Yeah. Why do I do this to myself? Um, and also the uh the scene where he makes Pepper the CEO of uh Stark Industries, it's always been you. Yeah. Uh, which comes back into play in Endgame. Um our guys also finally becoming humble. Yeah, yeah, a little bit, a little bit, baby steps. Yeah, but yeah, um, I, the movie kind of loses steam for me um, around the around the birthday party a little bit. The, where so he fights, where he fights, um, where he fights, uh, Rory. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, it's it's cool seeing them like smack each other with like, uh, bu- uh, you know, the weights and stuff like that. And but yeah, it's, I don't know. It was one of my least liked fight scenes because it was just it lasted far too long and it really took yeah. from what was building. I mean, Tony's having what he thinks could be his last birthday party ever, and this is where it evolved to. I mean, I guess go out how you came in maybe, but it just didn't feel right for the story arc that we were, we were seeing. Yeah. Uh, So Iron Man 2. Hmm. I actually didn't get, I didn't preemptively give this one a rating. Um, I didn't have a rating for any of them before we started. I just kind of threw that out on the fly. (laughs) Yeah. <laughs> so overall, I'd have to give Iron Man two another eight out of ten. Eight out of ten, nice. Yeah, I really did not like Iron Man two the first time I saw it in the theater. It didn't stop mm-hmm. me from seeing it like four more times in the theater. Um, but it's grown on me over the years. I mean, there's just a lot of subtle humor in there. It's not as in your face as the first one. And it showed, but I think that also shows the evolution of the filmmaking process uh, for the everybody involved in the production, everything else. Yeah. Um, but Tony was also part of a bigger universe now, and there was a lot of responsibility mm-hmm. there, and that weighs on him a lot. Um, the scene where he's about to tell Pepper, you know, I'm dying. Um, yeah. Such good acting. I. Yeah. I mean, I just there's lots of love in this film. That fight scene is not one of them. I don't think it takes away from the film for me, but it definitely stalled the story. I could have done without it. Yeah. Um, Tony coming to grips with the fact that my dad's not the hero I thought he was. And, mm-hmm. you know, he's already realized these weapons are dangerous. Uh, so it, it's away from that. It's more of, you know, like he can sympathize with the person coming at him because it's like, holy shit, you know, my dad did that's your dad kind of thing. So I just, there's so many layers to this outside of just these the superhero. Um, there are just so many yeah. emotional layers, personal layers, growth layers. Uh, I don't think I should say the word layers again for 10 years now, but I I just love that. And I like wa- going back and watching it because everything is just so overblown in a lot of these more recent films. And this is very, fight scene aside, a very stripped down film of humanizing this character. Yeah. And coming to grips with, 
um, potentially dying here, you know, because the palladium's not working and, you know, the guy coming for him knows that about him. And I, that scene on the track will forever be one of my favorite scenes too. Just oh yeah. Tearing the car door off. I mean, holy shit. Tearing the car door off, just seeing, uh, seeing him power up the whips and having his like shirt burn off of him. Oh, can we talk about Mickey Rourke's grins in this movie? Like just how gripping and chilling they are. Like that yeah. smile, that laugh. Holy shit. Yeah. Um, Cause I can't remember. I think the wrestler came out before this movie, right? Uh, 2009. Um, was it? Yeah. It was, yeah. yeah. And I mean, it, that was kind of a redemption story. And then this was his like, you know, just fully back. I'm like, holy shit. This is, yeah. I mean, you talk about perfect casting. I can't see it any other way. And even his humor in the movie was spot on. Oh yeah. I just, <laughs> I think the writing in this movie doesn't get the credit it deserves. I think it's some of the best writing we've seen in the films actually. And on my rewatch, I was just, you know, I, Sam Rockwell plays that role so much. I, I hate him so much in this film. He's <laughs> such a dick, but it's because he's so good at being a dick. He really is. And it's also funny to see him. And I'm sure he'll be back. You know, we got the hammer weapons. So I'm I'm sure he'll be back. Um, yeah. You don't just let somebody like oh. this play. So yeah, he'll he'll probably be back in Armor Wars. Right. Absolutely. Um, and I was actually I was, that was the only note I took is wow, are we gonna see him on Disney Plus? I I actually really love this film and I didn't at first. So it gets an yeah. eight for me as well. I just, the writing alone, the story, I just, there was a lot to love about it. Yeah. And I, that's, and that's not even mentioning um, the fact that we forgot that this was the debut of Black Widow. Right. And I mean, her entrance when she flips happy in the ring. I mean, oh, that's yeah. just, <laughs> that's awesome. Um, it's interesting to see like how charismatic Black Widow was to start and just how dark she got as the films went on. Yeah. She was just this young, fresh, like, let's do this character. And just there's so much on her shoulders towards the end of these yeah. other films. So seeing that in its origin, I mean, Nick Fury, you know, Samuel L. Jackson just bursting on the scene here. Uh, Happy Hogan is such a oh, yeah. such a delight in every scene he's in in all these movies. <laughs> I love him in Spider Man, but I mean his his lines in this film, his dedication to Tony, his, his dedication is just as much it's just as high as his sass right yeah. back towards yeah. Tony. Yeah, I mean he was my favorite character in the film, and <laughs> you know yeah. Don Cheadle coming in as Rhodey. I the chemistry is just I mean he's a great actor to be in with. But the chemistry is yeah. just right off the bat. For every scene he's in, it just it it worked. It worked so much better than the first Iron Man, simply for that chemistry reason alone. I think so, it was tough. I think it was tough because the only thing that I had seen um, Don Cheadle in before this movie was um, it was a movie called Rain Over Me. Great movie. With, that was an Adam Sandler, right? There was an Adam Sandler movie, yeah. and in his best. Um, non-comedic role since uh freaking or until like uncut gems um gr great movie on the sidebar but yeah it so it was a little jarring to see him um in this movie but yeah it really really grew on me oh yeah um i did not expect to give this movie an eight i didn't have a ranking score when i just watched <laughs> this movie but um <laughs> I, I thoroughly enjoyed this film and I'm glad I did the rewatch. And I honestly, I think in watching, I couldn't think of many more recent ones within the last, you know, seven or eight that I liked better than this film. So I'm yeah. curious to see where they stack up. Um, I really enjoyed that we started with these three because they're also different in their own ways. Yeah. And they all played such a different part in this, you know, I mean, Hulk. Yeah. That Even Hulk with guy. two being from the same series, yeah. Yeah, and that Hulk movie kind of lost its relevance when they essentially rebooted the Hulk, if you think about it. So, yeah. Uh, it's it's really interesting because the one character that's going to survive those films is Thunderbolt. <laughs> so it's... Hell yeah. That, that, that's really interesting to me. That yeah. That was the one that survived, so... Well, and also Blonsky, maybe. We'll see. Yeah. Uh, this was a nice kind of kickoff, this whole thing, you know? These three yeah, films I think so. That, very iconic very important for their own reasons and i almost cringe when i talk about our next ones <laughs> yep we have thor captain america the first avenger and the avengers and 
though I recall seeing the Avengers at least 20 times in the theater, no exaggeration, I really can't stand that freaking movie. <laughs> Don't give anything away. I will not. I will you not. Won't come back. Um, <laughs> this was fun. It was a fun introduction. It's very folks, fun. Yeah. Come back every week to us, folks. Share your thoughts. Tell us we're wrong. Uh, mention it in the comments. Yeah. I'm used to being wrong. I'm used to getting called out on this stuff. <laughs> Also, don't forget Tim and I and our buddy Greg are on No Coast Avengers. No, no Coast Defenders. <laughs> Talk about the Avengers here. I'm looking at my screen. No <laughs> Coast Defenders on Podbean and Spotify. And I think our episodes usually drop every, is it every Wednesday morning they usually drop? Yeah. Between, uh, Tuesday and Wednesday. Tuesday, tu- yeah, Tuesday and Wednesday, yeah. Yeah, check those if out. Gre- if Greg uploads the right file. <laughs> yeah, we've had that too. Uh, my friend, I appreciate you. Absolutely. It's fun. I appreciate you too. Yeah. Well, I'm not That's looking good. forward to the next three movies. I'm looking forward to the conversation on the next three movies. But we'll get through it together. Yes, we will. It's a team adventure yeah. for life, my friend. So yes, with, with that, everybody, tune in next week. Let us know your thoughts. Tim, thank you, my friend. You're welcome, sir. <laughs>